we've got another management waiting by KEC. They've bagged a slew of orders recently in the transmission and distribution business. They won orders to the tune of 1,145 crore rupees across various segments like civil, cable data centers, FMCG. They've also secured orders close to about 1,000 crore rupees. The order intake this year so far has been 7,500 crore. Vimal Kejriwal, Managing Director and uh, CEO at KEC International, joins in now. Uh, Mr. Kejriwal, morning. Reema here. So year to date, FI24 so far, order inflow has been about 7,500 crores? Yeah, morning, Rima. I think you are absolutely right. We have got around 7,600 crores, which is roughly 30% higher than what we had earlier, last year. And how would that position you in terms of full year order inflows? Because your guidance is for 25,000 crores. I think we are in line with the guidance uh, because we also have L1s of, you know, more than 3,000 crores. So I think we are pretty comfortable and with a tender pipeline of close to 1 lakh 10,000 crores, I think we should be able to reach our guidance. Should be able. So how does uh, business typically get impacted, you know, pre-elections? Do we see a slowdown in the tendering process or the award of orders, the decision making? Uh, how are the next nine months likely to be for you historically, you know, ahead of the elections? So typically what happens is that uh, just before the, uh, the code of conduct comes in or, you know, or let's say the day the code of conduct comes in, from that day onwards, the formal ordering process comes to an halt or in government, government uh, basically I'll say railways and to extend the PSUs and all that. And that will continue till, uh, you know, the elections are held. So maybe for a month and a half or whatever is the time the code of conduct is there, you will not get fresh orders from the government sector. It doesn't impact the private sector or, or, or anywhere else. So that's one part on this. But typically, many times we see that there's a rush to award the orders before the code of conduct comes in. So wherever your L1, etc., there we will see a slew of orders coming in. As far as execution is concerned, there would be some impact on execution in case of orders which require, you know, some help at the ground level with the district administration, you need a police help or there's an ROW or there is some other clearances required. At that point of time, we, you will find the district admission doesn't want to, you know, uh, do anything which can create a, a problem for anyone. So there would there could be some minor impact on execution. But on the other hand, what happens is like we are doing a lot of water projects or we are doing railway projects. There will be a lot of pressure from the client saying, why don't you finish these projects so that their impact can be there. So it works both ways. And with our current order book, I think we are pretty comfortable that it will not have any, any significant impact uh, on our numbers. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Kejival, good morning. Uh, Prashant here. Uh, so... Uh, you know, uh, the one lakh ten thousand crore tender pipeline that you spoke about, these are uh, projects which have been uh, put out for bidding and you've placed bids and awaiting results or these are, this is visibility of projects? So it's it's a mix of both, Prashant. These are tenders which have already bid where results are not yet out and tenders which have already been issued or about to be issued. Okay, so it's it's a mix of both. Uh, you know, uh, so to my to Rima's question, if uh, we did not have these state elections, etc., and the general elections next year, would this would this tender pipeline, in terms of realizing some of this uh, sort of orders, realizing some of, some of this value as orders for you, would it have happened faster? Uh, will this get a little delayed, or not really? As you said, it balances out. I don't think it will it will have much impact. To be very honest with you, because. Uh, I'll tell you what, what will get impacted will probably be the railway tenders and a, and a part of uh, the power transmission tenders. Okay. Rest of all, most of it is private or international. So I, I don't see any anything significant, uh, any impact. No. So railways and power transmission is where uh, the most excitement is. <laughs> and if you've been uh, noticing, I mean, uh, uh, stocks and companies are just absolutely ballistic in this space. Uh, but you're saying that's interesting. You're saying if there had to be a, a bit of a push out, etc., it would perhaps be in these segments, right? Railways and uh, the power transmission but, space. But then let me add one thing. On transmission yeah. side, we are seeing a huge rush and a huge push to award tenders. Hmm. Okay, because I think with the way the, even the G20 went out, the renewable piece is getting more and more focused. And obviously, you know that a, a solar park can be put up in 12 months or 15 months or whatever time, whereas the transmission line and subsidy will take longer. So we are clearly seeing a huge amount of push uh, happening on award of, of transmission line and subsidy tenders, you know, before the elections. Very clear. Yeah. No, that's very interesting. Uh, so again, kind of, uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a pull and push, but I guess balances out. 
Actually, I wanted to ask you on the thermal side, sir. You know, we've discussed this before, right? Uh, and you said that uh, we've not seen a new capacity being put up. So, you know, you don't need the lines then. I mean, if there's no new capacity, there's, of course, other work, uh, maintenance, etc., which goes on. Uh, but in terms of new, a new cycle on the thermal side, are you seeing the first signs of it? Maybe a short-lived cycle, but it is needed because to bridge the gap between where we are now and when, you know, renewables will be completely able to take care of, uh, you know, the demands. Uh, are you seeing that? Uh, to be honest, we have not seen much of it. I think the only one or two places where we have seen were where the plants were operating at a very low capacity because of economic reasons. Now, those plants are also operating at a higher capacity and we have been, at a couple of places, have been asked to, you know, fast track the lines, etc. to these plants which were, you know, or, or say, I'll say on a slow track, okay? Because the capacity was not there, so those lines were not being needed at that point of time. Now, those plants are operating at a higher capacity, so I know of at least one or two lines where we have been asked to sort of fast track those lines to uh, pick up the, you know, offtake of the power. So, existing capacity uh, connected to the, connected yeah. to the grid? That's yes, the... Increase, the capacity, increase the capacity of the grid or let's say one circuit is operating, please ensure the second circuit also is, you know, built in and all that. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, but but no, uh, not a new kind of, uh, because we had that order from NTPC, right? I mean, that announcement from NTPC for a, uh, for a big uh, plant. Uh, so that kind of, I think, stoked a fair bit of excitement that maybe we are starting to see something here. So, so Prashant, if you look at the timelines, I presume the power plant would probably take four years of IV. Uh, that has been the standard time. I don't know how much now they will do. A transmission line would typically take from, you know, 15 months to 18 or 21 months. So what we have normally seen is once the orders for the boilers and others are placed at, at, the, at the power plant, then they start uh, looking at, you know, avoiding the transmission line. So the transmission line will follow probably a year, year and a half later on. So broadly, how have uh, the raw material costs for you been? Uh, in the current quarter? How is cost inflation? So the cost had been very stable for the last, I'll say, three, four months. This month, we are seeing some attempt by, you know, steel producers and cement producers to push the price up slightly, which is normal yeah. now that you're towards the close of the of the monsoon. But otherwise, I think they have been pretty, pretty stable. I think we are pre pretty happy with the way the costs have been uh, stable. Okay, and this attempt by the steel and cement producers to push through a little bit of a price hike, will it impact your margins? What's the price hike no, that they're asking? No, I don't think uh, it, it's significant. It will impact the margins because, you know, the, this time what happened is if you look at the Q1 part of it, you know, April to June, which is the prime when the prices normally go up before the monsoon did not go up. So actually okay. we had some, some beneficial runs, so that will get comments. But I don't think it will impact the margins, no. And what's the extent of price hike they're asking? It's still nominal, a couple of thousand, no. you know, in steel. No. No, nothing significant. So, uh, on track for 7% uh, margin, sir? Uh, what we have said is, yeah, 7 for the year. I think we are on track, yes. We are on track. Got that. Uh, Mr. Kejival, great to speak with you, sir. Appreciate you joining in. And uh, it's a pleasure, as always, having you here on CNBC TV 18. Uh, good conversation, as always. Uh, 683, uh, stock's absolutely flat, but it's done so well. Uh, uh, the, you know, actually, the... Power transmission, uh, cable stocks, I mean, all. For the year, KEC is up uh, 40% and uh, it's had a last few very good years starting 2020.